Hey, welcome back to another style study video. In these videos, I like to take a particular artist and look at the wide variety of styles that they use over the course of a career. And in this video, I wanted to talk about Chris Bacalo, Chris Bacalo. I'm not quite sure how to say his name, even after all of these years of being a fan of his work. I actually um, was first introduced to his work uh, when I was a little kid reading Generation X. That was one of what I consider to be uh, one of the more inspirational comics uh, growing up. And for lack of a better word, back then and probably still now, I feel like I would describe his art as being weird. And I mean that in the most uh, uh, complimentary terms. His work stands out, especially in the mainstream uh, superhero comics environment. And I feel like it does because it's always changing and evolving. Uh, I don't feel like he's trying in any way to stay on brand or look a certain way for an extended amount of time. Uh, the work has so much energy to it, and it feels like he kind of is just drawing in the way that excites him the most at that time. And uh, that's something that I'm very inspired by. And again, especially in the world of mainstream comics, it's rare that you come across artists uh, who are willing to take those kinds of stylistic uh, chances. In these videos that I make, um, I often highlight artists who do that. I guess that's the reason why I make these videos, just because um, it's always inspiring to see as a comic creator myself, because it's a reminder that you don't have to just stay in one particular type of style for your entire career. Uh, there's room to grow and there's room to experiment. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but um, it's, uh, it's worth taking those chances if uh, that's where your creative energy is kind of pushing you. So uh, with Chris Bacalo's work, um, I think some of the things that really stood out to me when I was first looking at his work at a young age was his panel and page designs. Uh, it was unlike a lot of things that I had seen uh, up until that point. He was able to fit a lot of panels on a page, which was fascinating to me. It still is. Um, but instead of doing it in like a very rigid kind of uh, way, he would kind of play with the positions of the panels. He would play with the outlines of the panels. Um, he would oftentimes also create like patterns in the background of a comic page, almost like a wall, a wallpaper pattern. Um, so if it were Generation X, he might create like a series of X's and then uh, create a pattern out of that. And that would be in the background of a page. He would also draw in the margins of the pages. I don't think it's uncommon for artists to do that, but it's less common for that stuff to be printed. <laughs> um, and so it was part of the overall page design. And a lot of that same kind of like weirdness and uh, playfulness in his art still exists to this day, which is really cool to see. When I'm studying an artist's style, oftentimes I like to look at the black and white versions uh, because although the coloring is so great, it's really nice just to be able to see the line work and just kind of see the nuts and bolts of the drawing. So trying to study Chris Bacalo's work and looking at some of his black and white artwork, whether it's just pictures of original art or scans of the black and white ink drawings, they are incredible. The, the level of detail and varied patterns and different kinds of mark making, uh, it's so inspirational. And I feel like the playfulness aspect of his work comes out, and then the more that you start to study it, uh, the more you see that there's such a precision to it. Uh, there's a really thought out and understood construction underneath of just drawing in general. And then he's able to take that those fundamentals and play with them uh, in order to create something that's very, very imaginative and uh, playful. Similar to Stuart Immonen, who I also did a style study video on, uh, one of the things about uh, Chris's work that I really enjoy is that 
he's able to illustrate various types of stories ranging all the way from a team superhero book to something that's more uh, based in real life. And so his Generation X book and his run on X-Men all highlight the ability that he has to be able to draw a very high energy superhero um, costume characters work and do it on, on a very high level. Um, but then you look at his work that he collaborated on with Neil Gaiman with the death character and you get to see him draw you know New York City scenes and real life kind of characters and different types of emotions and uh, playing with various kinds of uh, page designs and you get to see that whole range and it's that kind of thing in a comic book artist that I'm most inspired by um, the ability to do both of those things one of the other words that I feel I would associate Chris Bocklow's work with is uh, prolific. He's created so much work. I mean, just doing a quick Google search on his name, you'll see various covers and pages and so many different characters. Uh, he's created such an, an amazing amount of work. And um, I was also struck early on to see that on some of, I think it was Generation X, or it might have been some of his X-Men work, that he would also do the coloring as well. And he does a really great job with his colors. I love the way that in certain panels, he'll sometimes incorporate uh, like a pixelated photograph. And you know he can draw it because on so many other pages, he'll draw really ornate and detailed backgrounds. But he'll throw in like a pixelated photograph and it it feels like it was a choice to create a certain mood rather than just to take a quick shortcut. Um, it's like a sort of an artistic decision and a storytelling decision as well. And um, I love the application in little areas that he'll utilize that for. As an artist, he seems to be inspired by a wide range of artist himself. I see bits of Mobius in his work. Um, I see some maybe Japanese inspiration as well. Um, I feel like he's the type of artist who assimilates his inspirations and when it comes out, it's its own sort of unique thing. Uh, it doesn't look obviously derivative of something else. Um, it looks like he took the inspiration and um, just very naturally created something very new. Anyway, if you're a Chris Bacalo or Bacalo fan, uh, hopefully you can help me pronounce his name. <laughs> and hopefully also you enjoyed this video and just revisiting some of these uh, great pieces of art over the years. If you've never heard of Chris Bacalo, then hopefully this is uh, an inspiration to look into more of his his art. He's got a ton out there. He's been working for many years and he's worked on so many different comic book projects and collaborated with so many different writers. So um, he's definitely worth looking into. I'll leave some links down below where you can pick up some of his stuff. And uh, yeah, comments below if you have them. And thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.